Hello friends, this is an important notification to all my subscribers and viewers that I am going to start a new series on ancient history for UPSC IAS preparation and also for various state public service commission examination preparation. Okay, so before moving further, let's look at the importance of ancient history in UPSC IAS preparation. First point is that it is an important component in prelims examination. So history constitutes an important point. Since history is a static subject, you need not to update this regularly. Once you have, study, you have studied the history, it is a static sub subject. You need not update this. Only thing you have to revise this subject. So it helps to uh, get assured marks in the prelims examination. And also you can get easy marks if you are thorough in history. And second important point is that in the mains examination, history comes in the paper one okay of all the papers general studies papers except paper four paper one is highly scoring okay it is highly scoring when compared to all the papers and history along with geography constitutes an important component in paper one so if you are thorough in ancient history along with the modern history you can score very high marks in the paper one of mains examination and third important point is that art and culture is an integral part of ancient history so if you learn ancient history thoroughly it helps you in better understanding of the art and culture part and fourth important point is that if you know the ancient history thoroughly you can write better essay you can score high marks in essay paper because it helps to compose a balanced essay with historical accounts for example Take for example the women empowerment, topic on women empowerment. So you can connect the situation of women in the previous ancient period with the present situation. So in the age of Rig Veda, that is uh, 1500 to 1000 BC, women were allowed to uh, take part in the various administrative procedures like sabhas and samitis and they were not discriminated against for any acts. Okay. Uh, there was no patriarchal society even though there was patriarchal society women were given equal equal an equal share in the decision making but at present it is not the case we are having a patriarchal society which are discriminating against the women so similar points can be included if you know the ancient history very well uh, in the essay paper so it helps you to fetch more marks and fifth important point is that in the ethics paper you can enrich your answers. So in ancient history, we learn about Buddhism, Jainism, Ashoka, Chanukya. So you can include uh, in the ethics paper about the doctrines of Buddhism and Jainism, since these are also these are also the ethical doctrines. And Ashoka is an example for the ethical administrator. Okay, and Chanukya is an example for efficiency in administration, and his Arthashastra is an important uh, document for the statecraft so if you know the ancient history for that matter history you can score very well marks in the examination so that is the theme here and in this series i'm going to cover the topics in a in a comprehensive way with holistic approach and as far as possible i try to integrate art and culture into the relevant topics and I'm going to stress the important points which are relevant for prelims, mains, ethics, essay and other papers during the presentation so that you can make take you can make notes or you can uh, design your answers accordingly. OK, so as far as possible, I'm going to uh, present the topics in a lucid and easily understandable language. So this is about the plan. So I'm going to cover these topics in this series first i'm going to start with stone age that is paleolithic mesolithic and neolithic history so it started uh, during five lakh years before christ okay and neolithic age uh, ends in 2000 bc okay from five lakh bc to 2000 bc uh, stone age period runs okay after that charcoalithic period that is charcoal 
lithic charcoal means copper lithic means stone copper stone age okay after that bronze age comes here the important civilization that is harappan civilization prospered during bronze age okay in this in this section we learn about town planning agriculture and domestication craft religion and scripts and after that aryan invasion happened during the rigvedic period that is during 1000 uh 500 to 1000 bc okay so we know about the aryans their society and the polity during that period with the help of rigveda this document so this document provides a rich account of aryans and their society culture religion okay so after that after rigvedic period we find later vedic period in the later vedic period three important other uh, uh Vedic texts were compiled. These include uh, Sama Veda, Atharvana Veda, and Ajo Veda. Okay, and after that, Jainism and Buddhism came. So we learn about do the, their doctrines, spread their impact on society and the contribution. And after that, and not sorry, uh, Mahajana Padas were the contemporaries of Buddhism and Jainism. That is Mahavira and Buddha. So of the sixteen Mahajana Padas, Magadha Empire uh, was strongest. so after that alexander invaded india during uh, uh, this period and after that the mauryan empire started started by the chandragupta maurya and later ashoka came and we learn about their significance society polity art and culture and after the disintegration of mauryan empire small principalities emerged in the north western part of india okay so these small principalities could not resist Uh, the attack from the central asian rulers like shakas parthians kushans okay so even though they ruled the north western part of the country they totally integrated into the indian society and culture so these rulers central asian rulers they contributed a lot for the indian polity art and culture and technology okay after that shatavahana came and later in the same period deep in the south south india we find megalithic culture that is large stone burial culture so at the same time we find three important kingdoms in the south india this include chola chera and pandyas and also sangam literature were also uh, compiled during this period from uh, i think 3rd bc to uh, 2nd ad i am going to explain this later with accurate account and after this the gupta empire came into existence during 3rd century ad uh, established by the chandragupta first later samudra gupta came and after that chandra gupta second came uh, so this is called the golden period in the ancient history of india okay so in this period art and culture prospered science and technology uh, have been invented so we discuss about this in detail in the coming videos and after that Harj ashwadhana kingdom came and later uh, in the part of the series let's also discuss about the indian philosophy for example sankhya yoga nyaya vaisheshika mimamsa and vedanta so let's look at these uh, things in the coming videos and let's also discuss about the cultural contact uh, with the foreign countries of the ancient india and let's also discuss about the science and technology in the ancient india so these topics will be co covered and if there is any other uh, topics which must be covered which are not included in this list i'm going to do the same and if you want i can explain the timeline uh, now let's look at the chronological order of uh, ancient history ancient history started uh, uh, from 5 lakh bc ago uh, from early stone age and middle stone age started during 1 lakh 25000 bc and mesolithic period started during 5000 bc and neolithic period started during 3500 bc if you look at the period here the most of the period is consumed by the early stone age that is paleolithic culture from 5 lakh bc to 5000 bc so this is a long period and a short period has been uh, taken for mesolithic and neolithic period and later after that charcoalithic period came from 1800 to 2500 bc and after that indus valley civilization prospered during 2500 bc to 2500 bc and vedic age from 1500 to 1000 bc after that later vedic period during 1000 to 500 bc and after that mahajana padas during 600 to 500 bc our prospered and 
invasion of Alexander took place during 327 BC and Chandragupta Maurya came into accession during 321 BC. Okay, and Mauryan Empire ended during 185 BC. And the Central Asian rulers invaded India, um, that is Northwestern India during 100 BC to 200 AD. Okay, these rulers include Shakas, Kushans, Parthians. So even though these rulers were from Central Asia, they totally integrated into India, uh, Indian culture and society, and they dissolved in Indian culture. Okay, and in 75 AD, Kanishka came into accession, and Gupta period started during 320 AD, and Samudra Gupta came into throne in 335 BC. Sorry, AD. So finally. In 712 AD, Arabs conquered the Sindh. This marked the end of uh, ancient history. So this is the broad timeline uh, for ancient history. So thanks for watching this video. Please uh, please share these videos so that it can reach more people and subscribe to the channel for more updates. Thanks for watching.